Hello YouTube, I am your host Lightly Salted and welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we are continuing to search for our lost U-boat. For those of you tuned in last episode, you'll remember we received a transmission from HQ letting us know that one of the members of our fleet is missing at sea. On our way to the objective, we ran into a enemy transport ship and we went over some of the minutia of sinking said enemy transport ship. Now you'll note here that we are still within the containment sector of our sunk target. As I explained in the last episode, this will continue to affect your time compression until such time as you are roughly outside of this red circle. Since we're stuck in a time compression dead zone, I thought I'd go ahead and explain a little bit more about discipline and oxygen consumption. What I'd like to do is try to simulate a situation in which your morale is decaying rapidly. So I'll select Mr. Hagnow to head over here to our storeroom, open the galley, and I'm going to remove all but one food type. This will serve to get rid of any bonuses we have for having multiple food types in store. And you can see here, our discipline is beginning to drop. We no longer have the additional bonuses from our food, so the extra work from the officers placed upon the crew is making them a little cranky. I also plan on diving the boat. In previous episodes, we'd quickly gone over the diving gauge here and the icons to its right. A quick note on that, if you make any selection below the depth of periscope depth, your boat will automatically go into alarmed status it's decided that you are crash diving due to an emergency. So why don't we go ahead and set that up? I'll go ahead and give a command to crash dive to the maximum safe depth of 150 meters. And the alarms begin. You can see here that our negative multipliers have increased at a minus one per minute because of the alarm. We will be fully depleted in 50 minutes, 38 seconds in game time. I'll go ahead and let the crew take us down, and I'll see you in a moment. All right, here we are at roughly 150 meters below the waves. Let's take a look at our discipline. Our discipline is dropping rapidly. We are minus one per minute from alarm, minus three per minute from the current depth, and minus eight per minute because we have too much work from our officers. As you can see here in the bottom right, I've given all of our officers helpers whether or not they're performing any tasks. This is a fairly accurate representation of what morale is going to look like during an attack run. Our oxygen is being consumed at a rate of 5 per minute, and our batteries are also being drained due to using the electric engines. We're going to go ahead and increase speed to flank, and get ourselves nice and noisy. Alright, we're making approximately 10 knots for our speed. Let's take a look at our noise output. Our boat is currently generating 97 decibels. We have 94 coming from the gyro compass, 85 coming from the steering engines, 93 coming from the electric engines. So what can we do to mitigate this? Mr. Hagnow, if you'd come over here and switch off the gyro compass for us, please. Ah, our noise has dropped to 93 decibels. We could, of course, reduce speed to forward one. And now our output is down to 88 decibels. We could take this further by picking any of our engineers, in this case we'll choose Mr. Watcher, and we're going to mouse over the depth steer station. In our previous episode, we had talked about using the depth steer station to keep us from breaching the surface of the ocean. However, if you were to right click, you could also bring up switch to manual steering. This will disengage the electric steering, which makes its own noise. And as you can see, our noise level is now 85 decibels. All of the noise of our ship is now coming strictly from the electric engines. Our battery capacity continues to drop, and we could mitigate this by having Mr. Hagnow begin navigating for us once again. In this configuration, we are now using 9.9 .9 worth of electrics per kilometer, or a rate of minus one per minute. If we were to kill the engines altogether, all stop. You can see here that we've gone to a neutral value on our battery capacity. Our ship is no longer consuming battery power. Discipline continues to drop. So why don't we go ahead and take away all of the helpers from all of our officers. 
All right, we've eliminated the multiplier caused by too much work from officers. What we are left with is a minus one per minute from alarm and minus three per minute from our current depth. Depth plays an extraordinarily large role in your discipline. You'll note here that in our dive meter, we are sitting in the yellow zone. There's also the green and red zones. Why don't we go ahead and move our boat slightly into the red zone and see what kind of difference that makes. And we've reached dangerous depth. The game is letting us know that at this point we could expect leaks. All right, taking a look at our discipline again, our current depth has changed from a modifier of minus three to minus five per minute. Our oxygen consumption continues to suffer due to the fact that our crew is of course breathing. Why don't we go ahead and turn on the blue lighting and immediately we see a modifier show up that we are silent running blue lighting with a negative 15% usage. In earlier episodes, we spoke to your food contributing to your unhappiness. So let's go ahead and open up that storeroom again. We've maxed out the galley with as many food types as we can stuff into it. However, it has no effect on our discipline. We could hold the tab key and attempt to make one of our officers play cards or cook for the crew. However, at our alarm status, we do not have that option. While at alarm status, you will not have the option to either cook or play cards with the crew in order to offset your morale loss. Why don't we go ahead and bring our depth up into the green zone? Let's say about 90 meters. And as we cross into the green zone, we can see that our current depth affects us at a rate of minus two per minute. So to recap, in the green zone, minus two, yellow zone, minus three, red zone, minus five. If you're in a scenario where your discipline is dropping very rapidly, however, you cannot service your boat, you may be able to sneak up at least to the 90 meter mark and slow down the consumption. Oxygen. I'm going to go ahead and switch the blue lighting off and run our oxygen down to a more dangerous level. As you can see here, we've now managed to lower the oxygen level down near 50%. So let's talk about what we can do about oxygen. If we go ahead and grab Mr. Hagnow, bring him just after the galley, we'll find the ventilation controls. Go ahead and right click. We have the ability to open it in which we could place potassium absorbers to scrub our air, or we could just go ahead and turn it on. A quick note, this is not an instantaneous process. One of your officers will have to leave the station they're at and walk to the controls themselves. If you need this operation to happen quickly, I suggest having an officer hanging out near the valves. And as you can see, our oxygen levels are rising. We are currently at 28 per minute, 31 per minute, and so on. Definitely take note that your ventilation system makes a lot of noise. Our ship, which was sitting at 88 decibels, is now sitting at 96 decibels. Turning on ventilation around warships will get you found out in a heartbeat. Mr. Hagnow, if you could turn that off for us. Something else to note, the ventilation system will do an excellent job of replenishing your oxygen all on its own. However, if you have to run it for an extended period of time, you'll note your oxygen level beginning to decrease again, even if it is turned on. This is because your air has become stagnant, choked with carbon dioxide, at which point you would have to have one of your officers open the ventilation tab and place potassium absorbers into the ventilation system. And you can see here just above the ventilation controls that it gives you a readout of how many you have stored in the system. Another quick tip, if you know you're only going to be able to run your ventilation for a very short period of time due to escorts or other dangers, you could simply put some potassium absorbers in the system and turn it on, whether you require them to scrub the air or not. With potassium absorbers installed, your oxygen level will increase much more rapidly than without. Our battery capacity is dangerously low, so we're going to go ahead and raise the boat. Capitaine. We'll get Mr. Watcher to switch us back to electric steering while we have the chance. Don't worry if you never remember to turn electric steering back on. We'll get Mr. Hagnow to switch our gyro compass back on for us. And we're back on the surface. Now a quick note here you'll see there is a white teardrop on the floor of our control room. This is an indication that we've taken water on board, likely due to our dangerous depths. If we hover over the pump, we have 0.2 meters cubed of water remaining in the compartments. We could have Mr. Hagnow switch on the pump for us, and if we continue to mouse over it, we will be able to watch that number decrease as the pump does its job. And just like that, all of our compartments are dry. 
Mr. Hagnow, could you turn that back off for us, please? Morale is still dangerously low, even with our varied dishes in the galley, so we'll go ahead and have Mr. Osterman tune in on the radio. Now, you'll note that our radio channels are fairly weak. Normally, you'd see all green bars. If we go ahead and give Mr. Osterman a helper, you'll notice they jump back up to green. We've gone ahead and extended our range. Mr. Osterman, if you could play some music for the crew... So as you can see here under Discipline, we are gaining plus 12 due to the multiple food types in the galley. We have Mr. Hagnow doing some cooking for us, giving us plus 7 per minute. Our music is giving us plus 10 per minute, and our normal lighting is at plus 10%. We will have full morale in 3 minutes and 57 seconds. You'll notice our battery capacity continues to drop. We are losing two per minute due to the fact that we turned our gyro compass back on. We will not begin replenishing battery capacity until we engage the diesel engines. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we are. Our diesel engines are giving us plus 12 more electrics per minute. The faster you run your engines, the faster your batteries will recharge. Back to the task at hand. We are 68 kilometers away from our missing ship. I'm going to rotate the crew around a little and hit some time compression, and I'll see you in a moment. And we're coming up on our missing ally. You'll note here that the icon we set a course to is not precisely where the target is located. We note it here on the map as a Type C. We have a warning just above our initial icon that says, Inaccurate contact. Units may be anywhere within a radius of 4 kilometers. So the coordinates we got from HQ were off by at least 4 kilometers. You will often run into this problem if you are given the mission to track down enemy freighters. Let's go ahead and adjust bearing. And I'll see you in a moment. Detection. We now have a visual on our target. We'll get into manual mode. Hit our zeroing button. And zoom in. As we can see here, lock in. And there is our missing U-boat. You'll note that we've spotted the U-boat and received an icon saying we should be radioing that information back home for a value of 150 additional budgets. A quick note, I have on occasion gotten these missions from HQ and tracked down our missing U-boat. However, on two occasions, it's turned out to be a bit of a trap. As we entered the visible range of the U-boat, enemy warships were lurking in the area, waiting for command to send more ships to investigate. Just something to keep a note of. Much closer now. New mission nearby. An icon has appeared here on the right, saying the crew missions. We can send our men on missions nearby. We'll get a little closer, and we'll stop right about here. We want to slam on the brakes a little bit so we don't overshoot, so we'll throw the ship into reverse. Wait for our speed to come down closer to zero, and stop. There are several ways in which you can conduct your mission. I highly recommend using an engineer when investigating missing ships. Engineers have an interesting ability to mine ships, which I'm assuming will be fleshed out in further builds, for enemy transports. Mr. Oldorp, if you please. We could have Mr. Oldorp move into first person mode, walk out here on the deck, and select the Type 7 directly. However, we can mouse over it, right click, and select investigate. U-1237 is floating on the water surface without any living soul on the deck. Inspection from our boat makes it clear that the boat sustained major damage. It remains a mystery, though, what happened to the crew and why the enemy left it in such a state on the water. We have the ability to go on board or cancel. I'm going to have Mr. Oldorp go on board. And here we are, heading on over to our stricken vessel. I'm going to pull back on the mouse wheel. And there he goes. You'll see here he is now investigating. Once this green bar is filled, we'll have a better understanding on what's going on on our stricken ship. Aha! The exclamation icon of our personnel pictures. Herman Oldorp cautiously boarded U-1273, reporting that he could not hear any sounds from inside the ship. He went to the conning tower and carefully opened the closed hatch, then quickly ran to the barriers on the conning tower, clearly choking. 
He reported that inside are the corpses of sailors with dried blood flowing out of their eyes and lips. Herman Oldorp had no doubt. The ship was damaged by a mine which led to flooding of the batteries on the boat, which in turn released chlorine gas and resulted in the death of the entire crew. We have the ability to sink the ship, in which Mr. Herman Oldorp returns to the boat. The boat must be sunk, it cannot fall into the hands of the enemy. We also have the ability to mine the ship. Herman Oldorp mines the ship. Explosive charges will explode after a few minutes sinking the vessel. The boat must be sunk. It cannot fall into the hands of the enemy. Required. Engineer. This is why I said it was a good idea to have your engineers carry out the investigation. I've decided to sink the ship rather than mine it so we can play with the deck gun a little bit. And while the chief heads back to get on board, we'll have Mr. Hagnow, our gunnery guy, get on the deck gun. A quick note on mining the ships. If we select Mr. Oldorp and go to his character screen, we can see his skills. Skills are gained by increasing the experience level of your crewman. Mr. Oldorp's skills currently include being an engineer and cooking. Later on down the road, your engineers will unlock the ability to mine ships. However, due to this build not being fully fleshed out, your engineers have this ability directly from the get-go. We could have had Mr. Oldorp go ahead and mine the ship. Now that Mr. Hagnow is in place, we'll go ahead and use the top right icon to get into first person. Manual mode. And we'll work on sinking our derelict ship. I believe for this task we'll go with armor piercing rounds. So we'll use the period and comma keys to cycle to armor piercing. And we're going to try to punch holes into the ship just along the waterline. There's a likely shot. We'll try out some high explosive. A quick note I may or may not have remembered to touch upon in earlier videos. The more personnel you have working the deck gun with your operator, the faster the reload times. And she looks to be nosing down. Goodbye, U1237. Let's center the deck gun. We still have to travel a fair bit of distance to meet our quota of 2,250 kilometers. And we still have quite a few thousand tons yet to sink. We'll go ahead and open our map screen. Pull back. And we'll head off in this direction here. This icon, which is grayed out, denotes a checkpoint on the map. If you travel close enough to the icon to unlock it, you'll be able to use the quick travel icon at a later time. Let's go ahead and set course. And I'll see you in a moment. Another incoming transmission from HQ. Radio, let's have you decode. A little bit of help to make that go faster. Transmission coming in. Open our envelope. And if we scroll to the bottom of our list, we'll get the most recent orders. We have information that crucial technology has been loaded on the freighter Empire Leonard. It must be sunk at all costs. Its predicted location is 45 degrees north, 34 degrees west. A note on these quick missions from HQ, they tend to only come in a few flavors. One being a stricken U-boat that's gone missing, a U-boat that requires spare parts, a U-boat that requires either fresh fruit or vegetables due to sickness on board, or a ship that needs to be sunk at all costs. That transport is fairly close to us. I think we're going to have to revisit the idea of unlocking this checkpoint. We'll go ahead and set a interception course and get closer to our target. See you in a moment. We are now approximately 40 kilometers away from our target. The intercept course will actually have you intercept the ship itself. We're going to err on the side of caution and try to get ahead of her. And as you can see here, we overshot. What I intend to do here is throw us into maximum reverse. We'll dive and we'll wait for the target to come to us. Detection. And we have a third ship in the convoy. Our objective is to sink the Empire Leonard. This objective will not be completed unless we sink the correct ship. Mr. Osterman has become fatigued. We've moved into the yellow on his fatigue meter. 
so his effective area has decreased on the hydrophone. However, since our targets are well within the range, we'll leave him at his post. We'll have Mr. Watcher begin warming up torpedoes. Start with torpedo one, please. And for the purposes of the tutorial, I've decided to allow Mr. Osterman to gather his own intel about one of the target ships. Mr. Osterman has reached 99% of his solution. Oxygen is becoming a concern, so we'll have Mr. Hagnow go ahead and throw on the ventilation for us. We're not concerned about noise, as our enemy targets all appear to be freighters. When selecting targets on the map, you will be given a readout of what is known about that type of ship. If the ship is equipped with either sonar or radar, that will show up just here. All right, we've gathered enough information to start taking shots. We're going to fire at the farthest ship first. And what I hope to do is have my torpedoes land fairly close together in timing. I'm going to go ahead and get an idea of how far apart these ships are. And looks to be about 600 meters. So what I plan to do is open my compass tool, place a point on my ship, and draw out to roughly 600 meters. As my torpedoes pass this circle, I'll launch a second volley at the next ship in line. We'll go ahead and flood tubes one and two. And we will fire. We will close our torpedo screen in order to switch to another target. Flood tubes three and four. And we'll keep an eye on the fish we have in the water. And right about now. Mr. Watcher is reloading. We'll give him some help. Mr. Hagnow, if you can turn on the red lights for us, please, and hopefully get us a little extra sight. Mr. Oldorp, let's shut down the ventilation. Stop wasting batteries. Skipper, what can you see? All right, we have three ships. We fired first at this ship and then this one. We'll go ahead and raise our periscope. And with any luck, we'll see some fireworks shortly. Roughly 10 seconds. And we've struck one of the targets. Ah, uh, yes, our torpedoes were only... Our torpedoes were roughly two seconds apart on that. I would say those look like pretty good shots. The Empire Low, which is now identified due to the fact that it's within our visual circle, so we've got a name for her, looks to be burning. She may sink on her own. Our second freighter, which is unknown at this time, is burning and abandoned. And yes, she's going down. Now, our third target is at alarmed status. And what this means is this ship is going to change speed and direction rather violently back and forth to ensure that it can't be hit by torpedoes. Getting a lock on this, either manually or by allowing the game to calculate your solution for you, will be very, very difficult. I think we're going to go ahead and chase her down and hunt her with the deck gun. Let's service the boat, increase speed. We will have Mr. Osterman jump on the radio and radio in our sunk ship. A quick note I don't think I touched upon in the last video. If you do not radio home your kills, you will not get credit for them. And let's send that report home. Thank you, radio. Get yourself down for a quick nap. Skipper, let's get you on the targeting site, please. A quick note, you can use the eraser tool to clean up the points you've made on the map. And we will proceed to hunt down our final target. The second ship struck was indeed the Empire Leonard. We no longer have that listed in our mission set list, letting us know that we sunk the correct ship. You'll also notice that we've surpassed the amount of tonnage that HQ required us to sink. So this final target, the Empire Linden, will be a bonus. I think that's where we're going to finish up today. Tune in for the next episode while we hunt down the Empire Linden. A quick personal aside, I'd like to very much thank all the members of the community who've been tuning in, and I'd like to thank you for your comments on the videos. I really enjoy the back and forth. If YouTube is not your preferred method of communicating, you'll find a link to my Twitter in the description down below, or barring that, if I haven't figured out how to put the link in correctly, you can go ahead and check my About page on my YouTube channel. And a special message, one of the community has reached out to me and asked for a shout-out, 
So Alexis, if you're listening, hi there. Consider hitting that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.